We have Australia's largest range of tyre brands and sizes. Find a cheaper identical tyre locally stocked and we'll beat it. At Bob Jane T-Marts, we'll look after you. Knockout action in the 2013 BPL season. South Melbourne hosting Green Gully here at Lakeside in the elimination final. John Cairo, it literally is do or die action here. South Melbourne playing the final specialist Green Gully. It'll be a tough match. It certainly will be, David, but we have a good omen because the last time we played Green Gully in, in an elimination final was in 2006, our championship year, and we beat them here at Lakeside Stadium 3-0. Hopefully we do the same today. Looking for the throw into the middle there, not the best, and it's been taken here by Hopper, a nice steal, Hopper chooses the shot, Gonzalez the save, it might sit, Rickson shot goes wide, cleared by Fleming, chase for Holmes over the bar. Well, that was a frantic move there, John, nearly something from nothing created by Hopper. Yes, good work by Hopper here, he fires the first shot in anger for the day, and uh, in the end it is Kieran Gonzalez who does make a smart, smart stop there, and Trent Rickson unable to follow up with it, and eventually gully clear. Sulzma on that far side, Whipping one over, looking for Rickson. No, it's Brown, in fact. It might sit up. Chance for Holmes. No. Oh, geez, deflected. Nearly went in. It's a frantic stat. It's like a pinball machine in the south box, John. Well, South could have scored another goal here as it's deflected to, to, uh, to Luke Hopper there, who is unable to guide that into the net, as we see here again. A deflection off the Green Gully defence and a false to Hopper. Not sure if he expected that, but Kieran Gonzalez gloves it and escapes danger. Sulzmer again. Another free kick, dangerous position. Oh, the header just over the bar. This time it was Rickson. Couldn't quite get that sweet connection. A good cross here by Sulzman. It finds Rickson, but uh, as you said, David, he can't get the proper connection and his header goes over the bar and Green Gully escape again. Epifano, he'd love to get that pace going. Uses the pass this time. Sean Kelly has gone wandering here. He's up forward, puts the cross in. Rickson will try to keep it alive. Chance for Brand with the shots. And he can't get the power he needs behind it. It bounces up into Gonzalez's arms. Well, Gully, the first real attacking move they've had today. And Fleming plays it out wide. The ball played in. Now, Gavalis does well. It uh, bounced up dangerously there. Pete Gavalis gloved it nicely, and he's hurt himself too in the process. Marla with the throw. Holmes, chest down. Sulzmer gets onto the right, lays it. Marla, back post cross. Up goes Rickson. Can't meet it. Chance now. It'd be fun across the face off the post and trickles wide. That was so nearly the opening goal here, John Cairo. Well, it certainly is South's best chance of the match, isn't it, David? That's the closest they've come so far as we see Epifano's low drive across. It's devastatingly close, David, as it ricochets off the post and goes out. Sulzmer at the back post lurking, unable to tap it in. As we see here, Epifano goes for the cross. It beats Gonzalez, and it also beats Sulzmer. Hits the post and goes out. The first real chance of the second half. Sulzmer can hit a free kick. Nick Sulzmer with the shot, and... A little bit wide of the left up right there. No danger for the keeper that time. Probably looked a bit closer, uh, David, than what it actually was. As, you, as we see, Sulzman's free kick. He did score against Hume in that same position, but this one goes over and out. Marla gets it from big Brian Brand. Plays it long. Looking up there for Hopper. Combines with Rickson. Now back to Hopper. Will it stay in? Yes, it will. Luke Hopper. He's got Rickson running. Lovely cross. Rickson. Oh, no. He hasn't got the connection he needed. Jeez, it, I don't know if he misread that or if it just went off the side of his head, John. That probably should have been the opening goal. Oh, David, I think he's misread this because that's a lovely ball by Hopper. That is perfect for Rickson. Oh, I don't know about that, David. I think that's bread and butter for a, for a striker like him. As we see Hopper's cross, that's a beautiful cross. Rickson unmarked by himself. And it comes off his shoulder and goes out. And uh, Rickson really should have done a lot better there. Oh, gully. They look to... Play a long ball and oh, it's gone straight through. Jared Hain, he's one on one with the keeper. Hain looking for the shot, goes inside. Oh, that's a terrible ball. Straight to Marla. Gavalis puts it up to himself and eventually gets the save. Well, how about that? That was nearly a uh, quick breakaway goal, but well, in the end, he didn't. Hain didn't get the connection he wanted. Well, I really don't know what uh, Jason Hain was doing here. He's put through on goal, and I really think that he should have shot there. Gavalis comes out, maybe puts him off, and in the end, he goes for a, a shot across goal. Lays, lay it off across goal, I should say, and uh, the South defence gets back and Gavalis gloves it, and South do get away with one there, David. Geez, that looked like a handball clearly there from Andy Vargas. Referee blindsided, and Vargas going on a run now. 
Oh, cut off nicely by Kearney. That's well slid in there. And he might be able to launch a counter-attack of his own. Jawadi puts it up towards the left. Gully can't quite clear it. Rickson with the shot. Well, that was his last miss was bad. And that one was a shocking connection. No threat to the keeper that time. Gully may be starting to get into the game a little bit more here. One played across the field. Now a chance. They look to move it into the box. It's hit low. Oh, was that a handball? The shouts for it. The referee waves play on. It looked close, John. We might look at a replay here. I think that we've dodged a board here, David, as we see a cross come in. It's fallen for Jason Hayne. And Jason Hayne's shot. Yes, I think it is a handball. And uh, Perry Moore, the referee, has not given that. South has gotten away with that one indeed, David. Well, a change now from Chris Taylor, the first one of the night. Bradley Norton comes on, replacing Epifano and putting on the armband. Will this change make a difference? Kelly, nice in the air as always. Hopper steals one, not for the first time today. Well done there by Hopper. Sulzma, now Rickson, looks to play it in Rickson. That's just for a handball, it looked like it. Well, the referee, I think you're right, John. Now the referee, will he talk to him? He's blown his whistle, what's he deciding? I think he's giving a free kick to Gully, is he? Well, the linesman the wants a word with Perry Murr. And they've been talking now for a few moments, John. What would the decision be? Yes, he's blown it. He's pointed to the spot. John Cairo, sensational. Barely five minutes to go in this game. Well, Gonzalez, the keeper, is not happy. He is screaming at Perry Murr. And, well, he should get away now. He's got a yellow card. He's probably lucky to have that. Well, what a moment of madness this is, David. As we see Trent Rickson play through here on the side and his eventual cutback, it is a handball. It does look like a handball. And as we see, the linesman... Um, putting his flag up to signal a penalty, but Perry Moore lets the play go on before eventually calling the penalty later on. So we see the arm does go go uh, go up there and he does handle the ball. And Brad Norton, who's just come on, has the chance to be a winner for South Melbourne here, David. Up steps Norton. Oh, no, it's saved. Saved by Gonzalez. Oh, Bradley Norton. Jeez, he'd love to take that kick again. My first thoughts there, John, is that he just didn't get that one right. Well, it's a bit of a surprise here, Bradley Norton taking the spot kick, but he comes in and in truth, it's a very weak penalty and Gonzalez does guess the right way and makes a comfortable save. Well, I guess it evens itself out, doesn't it, David, because Gully were denied a penalty and South were given one and uh, South's penalty is saved. So it's still nil-nil under five minutes to go and it's very tense here in this elimination final. Oh, Gully, well, they do what they do so often and make South Melbourne pay. Here they go, they're building up an attack. Ball played out wide. Brand looking to close it down. A shot coming in the shot. Oh, Jesus, hit the side netting. It was a bit of a crowd goal there for a moment, John. A couple of people going up in the grandstand. That was very close. Well, I think it's Hamid Basma on the far side, David, who came on as a sub earlier. And uh, well, wouldn't that be a, a stab in the heart? Wouldn't it, a former South player to bury South? But uh, his shot hits the side netting. It fooled a few people, but it has gone out and it's still nil-nil. Norton gives that one back to Kelly. It goes very long to Rickson. Rickson's done well here to keep it alive. Showing a good bit of pace for a big man. Plays that one in. Hopper. Doesn't go for the first time shot. Tees up. Sulzma. Oh, Sulzma. Again, South Melbourne doing beautifully in the build-up and just not connecting. Oh, gully. We're probably surely heading for extra time now. Although Norton's stolen that one. Gives it to Jawadi. Jawadi's got Kearney running. Jawadi's going to run out of space here, I think, and... Gully should get a clearance. Oh, well done, Brad Norton. He's pinched that one. Norton looks for a cross. No. Tees it up. Kearney goes past Holmes, who leaves it for Sulzma. Sulzma wants a shot. No. Here's a chance for Holmes. Oh, yes, he's done it. Tyson Holmes in the last minute of the game. And look at the celebrations. Listen to the crowd. South Melbourne have the lead in the dying stages. John, it is wild. This is unbelievable. Tyson Holmes, of all people. Tyson Holmes, who's been trying those shots all season, and what a time to score in the 91st minute. The clock has just ticked into the 91st minute, and as we see, Brad Norton initially with some great work, plays it to Alan Kearney, he plays it over to Sorsma. Sorsma tears it off for uh, Tyson Holmes, and look at that for a finish. Gonzalez, well beaten. I think it's come off the, the um, inside of the post. We'll see it from here. But I mean, what a, what a way to seal this game, David. Surely South has won this now and knocked Gully out. As we see the shot, it comes in off the post and goes in. Gonzalez completely beaten there. And South have done it. And as we see the celebrations, wild celebrations, the fans are going off in the grandstand. This is wonderful stuff. Seems like 2006, David. Is that the omen that we were talking about at the start of the uh, commentary tonight? Oh, John, this is a huge moment. Biggest moment of the season for this South side. Well, Vargas, Gonzalez has gone up for it. They just need to defend now, South. 
The ball played in. A chance. No, a block across the face and wide. Is it a corner? Well, the players want a corner. No, I think it's going to be a goal kick given. I don't even know who got the last touch there, John. It's, it's a Rickson. scramble. I think it's Rickson, David, but geez. <laughs> The South players are giving the supporters a heart attack here as we see Hayne just couldn't connect to it and Ricks and clears it and listen to the fans now chanting on the sidelines. It's wonderful to see, isn't it? It's an unbelievable atmosphere at Lakeside, John. There can only be seconds left. The crowd is going wild. Gavalis pumps it long. They just need to hold on a little bit longer. Will we hear the whistle? Not quite. Sulzma, he's got Jawadi running. He might play it to him. Can he finish it off? No, he can't. Not with the ball like that. But will that be enough? Will that kill off the time? Gonzalez, he'll play one last long ball. He pumps it high and there it is! South have done it! 1-0 in the most dramatic of circumstances. A game where it looked like they might have blown it. Missed chances, a missed penalty. Extra time was looming. Gully had a couple of great chances. South Melbourne just gritted their teeth. They hung on and they are going to be playing the Melbourne Knights next week, John. Well, David, this is just an unbelievable finish to this game. I mean, with five minutes to go, we had a missed penalty. Gully denied a penalty and then Tyson Holmes scoring. Uh, just an unbelievable finish, David. But uh, what a remarkable finish. And as we go to Summer Street next week for a cutthroat semi-final against the Melbourne Knights. Tyson Holmes, what a moment, 90th minute. It looked like we'd blown it, we'd had a couple of great chances, we'd missed them, looked like it was heading to extra time and then you stepped up and hit an absolute ripper, mate. How did it feel? Oh, it felt amazing to be honest. Like you said, we had a few chances there and missing that penalty. The boys were a bit gutted and and the game was just sort of going back and forth and back and forth and it was going to take one moment. I'm just I'm just lucky I was on the end of a, of a great move by South. A bit of uh, good play from, uh, from Sulzma that set me up and yeah, when I hit it there was no greater feeling really. Let's be honest, extra time would have been a terrible thing to have to face. And you could tell by the reaction of the crowd that the, the fans were just overjoyed. That's the loudest I've heard the South fan in a long time. Yeah, definitely. The game was just neck and neck. And I don't think either of the players wanted to go to extra time. Everyone looked, looked pretty out in their feet. And it was just, um, it was a great battle. And then, and then yeah, obviously, like you said, with, with the penalty we missed and, and other things, we, um, we, we sort of had to, had to take our chance when it came. And the boys put in a great effort today to keep another clean sheet as well. That's, that's outstanding for Gavalis and a, a great sign of where our defence is at at the moment. So we're, we're looking forward to next week. Well, we do have word that we will play the Melbourne Knights in the minor semi-final uh, next week. Now, Knights a few weeks ago, we lost in unfortunate circumstances. It was a pretty tight game. Could have gone either way. Bit of redemption maybe this week? Well, you'd hope so, but obviously Knights have been quality this season. I think they've been a bit of a dark horse behind Northcote where they've just consistently kept winning and just sort of stayed out of the limelight of, of what Northcote have been doing. So they're, um, they're a great squad and they showed it uh, a few weeks ago when we, we were probably in some pretty good form and they, um, they, they bumped us off 2-1. So we know it's going to be a big battle then, especially at Knights. They're tough and their crowd get behind them. So we're, we're looking forward to the challenge, but we know the task at hand, definitely. Mate, it's been an interesting change for you in the last couple of weeks. New role playing at left back, but you seem to be fitting in very nicely. Yeah, uh, you know, Chris came to me last week and he just said uh, that you know you'd be playing me left back, and it kind of came out of the blue. But uh, I've played there previously growing up, so it wasn't much of an issue to be honest. I'm just happy to be on the pitch and contributing, you know. So yeah, it's, it's been good. Well, it's been a great defensive effort the last couple of weeks. This was our second consecutive clean sheet, and they couldn't really come at more important times, could they? No, that's it exactly. You know, throughout the year, I think we, we conceded a lot of sloppy goals, and the last two weeks, I think we've you know we've kind of tightened the ship a little bit and. Uh, Reduce Scully to limited chances there again today. So, you know, if you can keep a clean sheet, you've always got a chance. So, yes, yeah, it's, it's been good. We made hard work of it, but uh, probably the pleasing thing, we probably did beat Green Gully at their own game. You know, we ground out a result. We made it very difficult for them. Didn't give away too much at the back. And um, although we were wasteful of chances, you know, a clean sheet was probably the, the catalyst for uh, getting the result. Probably something that pleased the South Melbourne fans the most is that even in spite of the missed chances we had, that we didn't cop the sucker punch after all that. We managed to keep our focus, we managed to pinch the win when, you know, in previous weeks, months, we might have lost that one. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's uh, really where, what I'm sort of saying. You know, four or five weeks ago, I think we'd have lost that game 1-0, you know, exactly the way you say, but now we've got that little bit of uh, ability to grind out results and uh, make sure that we uh, don't give anything to the away, you know. And Tyson Holmes' goal was pretty special. Did you say anything particular to him after the game or was it just the, uh, the usual pat on the back? No, I just complained at the ones he missed. So, you know, No, obviously you, you're pleased that he, he puts away a chance like that, you know, and, and the moment in the game was fantastic. But, you know, we, we had chances before that and maybe 
in reflection, you know, the result's great, but, you know, we can have a look at how our finishing has, has been as well. Melbourne Knights next week, obviously just about as good a team as any in the league. Maybe surprising they lost to Bentley today. Now, we lost 2-1 last time out there. It's always going to be a tough trip, always intimidating atmosphere, derby atmosphere, but maybe a chance for redemption for South? Oh, certainly. I mean, um, you know, I think we go into the game as definitely the underdogs. They, you know, they finish top three, uh, get the double chance. Um, you know, we've got to grind it out each week and if we get beat, we're out. So, um, yeah, anything's a bonus, but, you know, as for saying that, I still think we're very, very confident going into the game as well.